This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two. Welcome to Daily Blast Live. It's Monday, November 11th. I'm here with Steffi and Erica. I'm Jeff. Brandon has the night off. Let's get started, guys. Today is Veterans Day when we pause to honor the brave men and women who served in the armed forces. From all of us here at Daily Blast Live, thank you for your service to our country. We salute you. And celebrities are commemorating the day too. Matthew McConaughey is new to Instagram, but he has always been a supporter of the troops. He posted this throwback pic from 2005 with the hashtag, thank you for your service. And Chris Pat got a, a personal posting a picture of his older brother and thanking him for his service, as well as all of his family members who have served. So a very special day. I know your father served, right? Yes. My father yes. served. Did your father serve uh, in England? No. No? Didn't. No, in England it's not. So in, in other European countries you have to at the right, age of 16, I thought that... but in England you don't have oh, to. Oh, okay. So um, that, that used to happen many years ago, but that's kind of been eradicated now. But one thing that I really love about when I, I notice about being in America is a few weeks ago, or maybe it was only a week ago, Erica gave me some tickets to go watch the football. And when I was there, they made all the veterans stand up and everyone was applauding them and cheering them and it was just so nice. And they did this most amazing, I don't know the correct term here, but like they had an amazing group of army troops that went out into the middle of the, what I would call a pitch, you call it the field. Uh -huh. And um, they had these really big rifles with knives on the end of them. And they yeah. were doing all these tricks and it was just fantastic honestly and everyone was whooping and cheering and like it was just amazing to see how much like I don't know time and dedication and practice that must take and then they did this really beautiful speech about okay just as long as these gentlemen have taken to learn this routine that's how you know much effort all of our armed forces in America take to protecting and serving this country and it, it was just a really nice moment we Absolutely. don't have anything we do have some things like that but I just that was a moment that I thought oh this is great well, today's a very special day that sometimes gets underestimated, you know, but we thank you guys every day. It shouldn't be one day. It should be every day. So thank you for your service. All right, guys, it was a star-studded night at the People's Choice Awards. Let me tell you, Kevin Hart made his first public appearance since surviving a serious car crash back in September. He received the People's Choice Award for Best Comedy Act last night. Let's watch. First and foremost, man, thank God, because I definitely don't have to be here. Being that I am, it makes me appreciate life even more. It makes me appreciate the things that really matter. Family. I want to thank my wife, my kids, uh, who really stepped up to the plate for me. And Jennifer Aniston also had a big night. She won Comedy Movie of 2019 with Adam Sandler for Murder Mystery. She also snagged the People's Choice Icon of the Year Award and gave a shout out to her friends' castmates. Uh -huh. If I have any claim to this, this word icon, it's only because I was able to be on, a, on an iconic show. I mean, Friends was truly, it was the gift of a lifetime, and I would not be standing up here without that amazing show, without those amazing five other actors, and with an audience who stuck with us for a decade. Wow. Now, that, that, that was a great speech, and she earned, I think, believe, I believe she earned that award, but there was a lot, I watched the award show last night, and I gotta tell you, it it was not good. I'm just gonna tell you, it was not good. Why? I'm telling you, it was missing that start. Nobody was there unless they won the award. So if you watched the red carpet and you saw a big name and they were up for an award, they won that award. Mm -hmm. Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio wasn't there, Brad Pitt, they were both up for awards. They did not win, they were not there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it lost a little magic for me. I think, you know, I think that word has gotten out from like middle America and has trickled to Hollywood. Like. Maybe there are too many award shows. Yes. And the fact that there are so many award shows, it's like, how often are we to watch, you know, people kind of congratulating themselves? And I love, like, you know, I, I love an award show. Um, I love the big ones um, and I get it, but it'd be like you having an office party and then like every single time it's like, yeah, way to make the most copies. And we all have to like <laughs> sit around and just clap for you. No. I don't know. I'm telling I'm with you. you. There's too many. I'm, but the People's Choice I thought would be a big one, and to me, it wasn't. I don't know. It was lacking something. 
Yeah. Wow. I don't know. I just love award shows. I love seeing everyone dressed up. I love seeing what people are wearing. You know, I love all of that. And I love giving people the chance to be celebrated or given a trophy. Mainly because I probably don't have any. So <laughs> well, I'm waiting nice, one day what a, for mine. What a nice segue, Steph. Now let's talk about the fashion at the People's Choice Awards. Let's start with the best looks of the night. Stephanie, you're up. Oh, I am indeed, Jeff. Let's take it away, shall we? <laughs> uh, well, uh, let's check out Zendaya. She slayed the red carpet. She looked very chic in this black number. She had all the cutouts, saying killer abs. Someone's been working hard in that gym, let me tell you. And uh, Sarah Hyland brought a pop of colour to the carpet. She wore this neon orange dress with uh, daring slits and some rather interesting palm tree embellishments. And then country singer Kelsey Ballerini, very strange name, love it, uh, channeled her inner share from Clueless. And I'm not going to lie, there's a lot of skin being shown here, and like, really, you could choose like your stomach or your legs, but she's living the 90s dream, so I'm, I'm in for it. Now, the worst looks. Kourtney Kardashian. Now, she Ooh. took menswear to a whole new level in this beaded suit, and for me, it just wasn't elevated. In fact, it was pretty much in the basement. Ooh. I'm all for oversized, but it's drowning her. And this little darling, she's only five foot one, and she makes kind of an old look tall, so it was just too much. And we're going for a chic red carpet, not like a slumpy drowned rat. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's You and it. Wow. Uh, Tam Tamara Mori. Now, I loved your sister, sister, but this look makes it look like Roger needs to go home. <laughs> uh, we're all for getting into the Christmas spirit, but darling, Christmas is still a month away. It's too much. And finally, former bachelorette Hammer Brown showed up like this. She kind of looks like a mermaid who's just won a beauty pageant. Sorry, love, but this look does not deserve a final rose, and I'm not sure many lads would want to be part of her world. Wow, for a Monday, <laughs> Steph, you went hard. Hello. <laughs> You I, feel better now? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like it? I did like it. I, I like an honest opinion of Somet the fashion. Sometimes I'm not sure. Like, I like to be a bit cheeky with it, you know. But I think, yeah, some of those looks just need to stay at home, not on the red carpet. I was mm. with you. And I wasn't feeling the big oversized suit on Kourtney no, Kardashian. She's so, she, you know she's, what? She's so she's tiny. She's pretty, yeah. She's so tiny. And I do love an oversized suit. And it can give the illusion of making you look much slimmer. But she's just so small, it literally drowns her. There needed to be a little bit of tailoring in there. And it just looks like. But in all honesty, the Kardashians set the trends. Do you think? now people you're gonna be seeing this more and more or no Probably, I mean let's be honest yeah like an oversized suit has been a, like a it is, it is a staple but I just think you need to be very aware of your height and body shape and if you can't pull it off you can't pull it off can you Mm. Oh, there it is, our fashionista right there, guys. All right, now we have an update on the topic that got us fired up last week. We told you all about T.I. and how he goes to the gynecologist with his daughter to make sure she's still a virgin. That seems to have caused a lot of tension, obviously, between the two. She reportedly liked a bunch of posts calling him possessive and controlling, and she even unfollowed him completely on social media. So, Erica, can they repair this relationship? Yes, they can repair the relationship. Thank goodness. Um, it does beg the question, though, if this is sincere, and I would believe that it is. She seems like a young woman who is has never been shy about being outspoken. I read a post from her where she was taking to task men who were inappropriately ogling her because she's underage and she was a girl. She's 17 um, right now, right? Or she yeah, I think she turned 18. She's 18. Um, but either right. way, she's a teenager. Right, exactly. So she she's not shy about stating her feelings. I think it's probably very disappointing to have a relationship like that and then have that be made public because yeah. that is a very private thing. Um, it's interesting that she's liking the ones that are against her father, but yes, you can always repair a father-daughter relationship. I hope they do, and I know everyone has a different opinion on what happened here, but I think he was trying to look out for her best interests, even if it was wrong. Even if it was completely wrong, I think he was trying to look out for her. Yeah, and I, I made the comment that my dad was very, like, making sure that I would is doing the right thing and how that can have an effect on you later but you're also talking about a man who has gotten around mm -hmm. and he's probably afraid of karma um, <laughs> now he understands true, that these were somebody's daughters and that's just kind of how that works out for guys sometimes right dads yeah Wow, people are going hard on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys, let's get this last story in. Alicia Keys is venting about gender stereotypes. It all started after her four-year-old son was ashamed to wear rainbow nail polish. She posted this video on Instagram, let's watch. The way I see it is that 
There is masculine and there's feminine energies inside of us all. It's concerning to me that we can't just explore these different sides of ourselves. If that happens, there's the judgments and there's the stereotypes and there's all the, the energy that comes toward that. Why can't we just express the different energies that are inside us? Mm. And you know, I have a three-year-old son. I'm sure four is a big jump. I don't know what four is like, but if my son wore nail polish or especially rainbow nail polish, he doesn't know what nail polish is, number one, or the significance of what rainbow nail polish is. So I think this kid is just trying to be a kid, but I see where Alicia Keys is coming from. Yeah, um, you know, I've been open about my sister, um, who was very much Again, identifying. Again, I'm speculating, just, yeah. to, just to be clear. But uh, my sister very much identified masculine energy when she was growing up. And she was very clear on that. Like every single decision that was ever made was baseball over um, so a softball. It was trucks over dolls. Like it was always very clear. At so a I young think, age? yeah, so children are telling you who they are, and we have to provide safe spaces for them to be who they are. Yeah. yeah, I just question if he even knows what that is, or if he's just I mean, what, playing around. At what age in America do kids go to like what I would call kindergarten and like preschool? Five. So he's well, my, Lawson, my son's already in uh, like preschool. You so know, I guess goes, it depends right. on I guess it, like if you're homeschooling or if you're you know going somewhere else. But I mean, children are very very aware, and you've got to think when you've got such a huge famous mum, I'm sure he's going to hear and like, see a lot of things that are maybe slightly older than his age group or the people that aren't in that limelight. Um, so he maybe is a bit more aware, maybe, I don't know. But I mean, it is a shame that, you know, he can't celebrate however he wants to portray himself to the world or he doesn't feel as though he can because he's feeling he's being told not to. Um, but I mean, his mum is a very powerful woman and she uses her voice for the good for everyone. So, I mean, he's got a great role model to look up to there and I'm sure she'll encourage him to be himself. Absolutely, interesting conversation. All right, guys, DBL is live. Coming up, Oprah reveals her annual list of favorite things. Wait till you see this coffee maker that costs almost a grand and a fan sues Madonna for pushing back the start time of her concert. Is the lawsuit ridiculous or does he have a point? We're sharing your comments when DBL comes back. They say if you get the job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And we love that at DBL. We get to tell it like it is even if things get a little heated. And since we're always live, you'll always see us 100% real. But it's not just about what we think. We want your opinions on what's happening in our world. And we guarantee on DBL, we're never gonna hold back. Because we talk about what you're talking about. Three, two. Welcome to Daily Blast Live. Let's get right to it. Welcome back to DBL. The material girl could find herself in court. Uh-oh. A fan is suing Madonna for pushing back the start time of her concert from 8.30 at night to 10.30. He calls it a breach of contract, but Madonna says the queen is never late. That was in quotes. Wow. So is this lawsuit ridiculous, or does he have a point? Let's get right to your comments, Steph. Well, Damien says, I actually see the guy's point. It's a total lack of respect for someone's time. I don't care if you're Madonna or the queen of England. England. Oh, <laughs> Damien, give it to us. Um, no, I mean, they're right. I, I'm torn here because half of me thinks um, if you're going to see a concert at half past eight, maybe that you can't stay that late and most concerts don't go on that long. But the other side of me says it's Madonna and what do you expect? This is kind of who she is. And certain people perform better at certain hours of the day or night or whatever. So if you want to see her at her best, maybe that's at 10.30 at night. Hmm. Nayala says, uh, give me a break. So you want two more hours to see Madonna big or are you wait two more hours to see Madonna big whoop? Um, you know, I as a person who is frequently late, um, I do have an issue with this. I mean, two hours after you're supposed to start, have a start time at 8.30 and then they move it to 10.30, that can make a difference of whether or not you're purchasing a very, very expensive ticket. It's like mm -hmm. not only not considering the time, but it's also not considering the funds. Absolutely. Genevieve says, it may not seem like a big deal, but for a lot of people, 10.30 at night is pretty late to start a concert especially during the work week, those two hours can make a big difference. Genevieve, I'm with you. I'm a parent now. I can't be staying out to all hours of the night, let alone paying a babysitter. Who knows if she's going to show up at 1030 now? Now does this mean she's going to come at 1230? Madonna, that's not very classy of you. I think it's kind of 
losing some of her uh, star charm. That wasn't mm. a, even a word, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Carlos, Not at all. <laughs> Carlos says, you can't see someone just because they start a concert late. What's next? Sue them when they run out of t-shirts at the merchandise counter. And um, you know what? I, so this is the thing. I think if it happens randomly, things happen in life, right? Maybe your plane's delayed. Maybe there's been an accident. Maybe there's been a family emergency. Stuff happens. But I think if it's every single time, then that's when it's really disrespectful. So if she's going to have 10.30, it needs to say 10.30 and that's it. And then that's when she comes on. She can't then be rocking up at 12. And Do just, you know what I mean? Yes, yeah. I totally But just to be clear, this guy was just looking for a refund on his ticket. Not Which is it. completely, I mean, well, now it's a suit, but which is completely reasonable. Like, just give the man his money back. Yeah, good luck with that. All right, guys, Miley Cyrus is recovering after another hospital visit. Uh-oh, Raquel, what's going on? Jeff, tonsillitis first sent Miley to the hospital last month. Now she went back for vocal cord surgery. It's a problem doctors discovered while her tonsils were giving her trouble. Sources tell people her surgery was a success, but the recovery process will require weeks of silence, which means all the new music she's been working on will be put on hold along with any performances. Miley really hasn't commented on her recent trip to the hospital, but sources say she hopes to start singing again early next year. Raquel, does part of the silence mean social media too? Uh, she's still <laughs> posting, but she's just not talking. Oh, lucky us. Thanks, Raquel. Can you imagine not being able to even speak for weeks? I, I I'd struggle it. for a day. I can't keep my mouth shut, Jeff, is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Coming up on DVL, a $900 coffee maker and a $350 margarita machine. What can we afford from Oprah's favorite things? Well, we're going to show you when we come back. Welcome back to DBL. Oprah has unveiled her annual favorite things list. She's been giving us great gift ideas for the past 23 years. That seems amazing. And sure, some are really expensive and totally out of reach for most people, but we can still dream. For those who have cash to spend, there's a $900 coffee machine and a $350 margarita machine. So you think in the long run, $6 a coffee that might add up? Six dollars yeah. a coffee. If you go to Starbucks and get yeah. like the whipped cream and put an extra pump, it's like get, six. Oh bucks. yeah, my vanilla ice latte with coconut milk comes to us uh, quite quickly to five dollars fifty something. See, five dollars. I'm telling you, that's how much it is. How am I still out of the coffee loop? You could get like get a whole Starbucks? martini for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's even good. It's crazy. Just <laughs> you can, you, substitute the there's milk. a margarita no. machine, so that might make up for it for Erica. Okay, That's yeah. only three fifty. Okay. All right. The cheapest item starts at twelve dollars. It's a reusable rubber coffee cup that comes in all different colors. That looks a little flimsy to me. I don't want to knock this thing. <laughs> It looks like it squishes, like the coffee would come up. I'm all for anything that's recyclable or reusable. Erica has quite a few of these. She brings them in, like not that exact one, but you do bring your coffee like in a in like a I'm, reusable. Yeah, I'm that's the reason why I don't know how much coffee thermos, comes. Sturdy thermos, but not a squishy coffee cup. I don't think it's squishy. It's I have a plastic material. one, it looks and funny. it's it's completely it's a cup. All it's right. a cup. I think All it just right. looked a bit weird that one. Yeah, 12 bucks, give it a whirl. And finally, there's a lot of celebrity makeup brands, but Lady Gaga was the only one to post this one. The brand's called House Laboratories. Am I saying that right? Yes. House, I believe that's Lady Gaga. She sells a holiday kit for $96. Is that worth it? Um, it seems very it. festive. It seems like something that um, a lot of makeup lovers would get behind, and I am so glad that Lady Gaga is finally going to make it. <laughs> This might be her ticket to the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It literally looked like six eyeshadows that you're going to wear all of once because who rocks around in green eyeshadow every day for the price of $96 when they're at home? No oh, one. Was it eyeshadow? I thought it was who is, is, is if, if it's lipstick, I don't want a green lipstick. I don't want a gold lipstick. You hate it on everything today when I mentioned the cups. You I like didn't the, I like the cups. Hate on the I cups like the reusable me. cups. I just, I'm not appreciating. Let's, let's pull up the eyeshadow thing, whatever it was. Let's have a little look. Here, look, green, gold, black. It's got to be eyeshadow. Hey, Oprah Too likes it. It's good enough for me. We'll Too be right expensive. back. Too expensive. Welcome back to DBL. We love sharing your comments, Erica. Yes, Julia says that's Stephanie Jones. She tells it like it is. Who's that, Julia? Is it's it Ju Julia. Julia, thanks, my darling. I'm glad someone appreciates my <laughs> viciousness. 
<laughs> you were extra vicious on Monday. I know. You know, I'm ready for a coffee. A cup of tea, love. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place. Have a good Monday.